very good day, everyone. Here is the latest update of Fazer News with me, Vanessa. Timor-Leste President Ramos Horta and the preeminent leader, Xanana Guzmán, celebrate 20th anniversary of Timor-Leste joining UN. At the United Nations main office in New York on 23rd of September 2022, Timor-Leste's president and the preeminent leader, Shanana Guzmán, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Timor-Leste, and delegation celebrated 20th anniversary membership of Timor-Leste with the United Nations. Uh, 20th anniversary since we joined the United Nations on 27 uh, September, I think, uh, September 2002. Uh, Switzerland uh, joined uh, after, it took longer for Switzerland to join, <laughs> <laughs> after 800 years. <laughs> and, uh, Switzerland joined at the time, uh, one week before, uh, before us. Uh, uh, the Swiss insisted they had to be before Timor Leste. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we think, uh, each and every one of you for being with us in this uh, uh, small informal uh, event after days of you know uh, around the clock. Ramos Horta expresses his proudness as Timor Leste has become a sovereign country just like any other country in the world, and he thanked all the international organizations for their assistance in developing Timor Leste both in the past and in the future. After the ceremony, Ramos Horta and Timor Leste's delegation met with New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, as well as Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen for bilateral discussion at the UN main office in New York. Based on the agenda, Ramos Horta will meet with the UN Secretary General as well, Antonio Guterres. Timor Leste admitted as UN member on 23 of September 2002 through a General Assembly vote in 27 September of 2002 following the Timor Leste's independence restoration in 20 of May 2002 as the result of 30 of August 1999's referendum. Timor-Leste's president addressed the UN General Assembly regarding global and Timor-Leste's current situation. The president of Timor-Leste, José Ramos Horta, participated in the 77th session of the UN General Assembly in New York on 23 of September 2022. Ramos Horta made a speech during the session where he addressed the forum with global and Timor-Leste's current situation, such as COVID-19 pandemic and the global political situation. Like almost every country on the planet, Timor-Leste endured multiple climate change catastrophes, prolonged dry season, followed by floods, the COVID-19 pandemic, and now the global economic impact of Russia-Ukraine-NATO confrontation. We had minimal direct impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of hospitalizations and fatalities. More children died of dengue than COVID-19. But the policies we undertook to prevent the spread of this insidious virus, such as curtailing free movement of people and goods, inevitably impacted on the livelihood of rural and urban people across the country. Farmers and traders suffered the most. To protect our children, we closed down schools, even though we knew that this decision would have uh, serious detrimental consequences for the hundreds of thousands of our children and youth who had to miss school and miss out on the one meal a day program, which provides a meal for every child in schools across the country. Ramos Horta also emphasized the joint effort between Timorese government, the national parliament and the development partners to fight against extreme poverty, the malnutrition and the low life expectancy through the breastfeeding campaign and the prevention of using the formula milk, subsidy for pregnant women, education expansion to all children. The Timorese head of state also stated the success of Timor-Leste health sector is shows on the increment of medical doctors where it has reached 1,002 personals to attend Timor-Leste 1.1 million population and hoping that the life expectancy can be reached to 71 years old as well as the success of COVID-19 fighting and mitigation. Concerning the global issue, Ramos Horta also adds Myanmar's people felt betrayed and abandoned by the international community. Lastly, I want to speak, talk about situation in Myanmar. The people of Myanmar feel abandoned, betrayed by the so-called international community. 
They ask why the difference in treatment, prompt and extremely generous support for Ukrainian civilians and refugees, so much sophisticated military support for Ukraine resistance, and such a mute reaction to the war waged against the people of Myanmar. The Myanmar conflict is impacting the security and stability of neighboring countries. It may escalate. There has to be dialogue by all involved in the conflicts in Ukraine and Myanmar and in other crises around the world. The Tatmado cannot claim it is defending itself from external aggression. In the Ukraine conflict, Russia and Ukraine should clear the ports and sea routes and allow normal resumption of permitted international shipping activities, following on the breakthrough in the grain and fertilizer agreements brokered by the Secretary General. Horta also suggests the need of promoting dialogue to resolve the crisis in Ukraine, Myanmar, and those similar in the other parts of the world. Ramos Horta also asks the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy to work hard to establish the ceasefire agreement for a comprehensive and permanent peace. Timor Leste's head of state also reminded Russia, Ukraine, and NATO to review their decision in the past where it has given that impact and withdraw from the front lines, borders, and allowing the Ukrainians to rebuild their homeland and to live in peace, and Russia to withdraw from any borders line. Cambodia expressed support for Timor Leste to become the 11th member of ASEAN. The president of Timor Leste, José Ramos Horta, met with Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen at the UN main office in New York during his visit to UN headquarters this month to attend the 77th session of UN General Assembly. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the two countries' cooperation in various fields. The meeting was also participated by Timorese Foreign Minister and Timorese Ambassador to the UN. During his speech at the 77th session of the UN General Assembly, Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen stated Cambodian support for Timor Leste's admission as the 11th member of ASEAN in 2023. Uh, Madam Chair, I should inform the meeting that ASEAN success is to coordinate toward uh, uh, receiving, accepting Timor Leste to become the 11th member. Uh, just now, uh, President of Timor Leste expressed a sincere aspiration to become the ASEAN member, and I hope that uh, at uh, the end of this year and later on next year. Timor Leste will become the 11th member of the ASEAN with other uh, 600 million uh, population in the region. I would like to express my thanks to the President of Timor Leste for uh, uh, coming to listen to my speech, and I hope that Timor Leste will become our member. Hun Sen also adds Cambodian attempt to fulfill the general objective in order to create benefit to regional community based on centrality, spirit, unity, and solidarity. In his speech, Ramos Horta also mentioned that joining of Timor Leste to the World Trade Organization and ASEAN next year is to support the interest of the nation, such as the reform of domestic economic, national interest, and economic diversification. He also affirms Timor Leste's admission to ASEAN is a political strategy for national stability and prosperity. ASEAN membership is a strategic imperative, as important as Timor Leste's stability and prosperity, as much as peace and prosperity in Timor Leste should matter to ASEAN. As much as peace and prosperity in our neighborhood benefits all conflicts or threats of and risks originate in one country inevitably impact on others. Ramos Horta and his delegation will return to Timor Leste on September 27, 2022. Rate hikes result of Ukraine war, China was dark in Asian economic outlook. The Asian Development Bank further slashed its growth forecast for developing Asia for 2022 and 2023 amid mounting risk from increased central bank tightening, fallout from the war in Ukraine and COVID-19 lockdowns in China. TDB now expects the bloc's combined economy, which includes China and India, to grow 4.3% this year after previously trimming the forecast to 4.6% in July from 5.2% in April, 
For 2023, the ADB expects the region's economy to expand 4.9%, slower than the April and July forecast of 5.3% and 5.2% respectively of its flagship Asian Development Outlook report. Growth in developing Asia is expected to weaken. GDP growth forecasts for the region are revised downward, as mentioned earlier, from 5.2% to 4.3% this year and from 5.3% to 4.9% in 2023. Chinese economy will likely expand 3.3% this year, further cutting the growth forecast after trimming it to 4.0% from 5.0% in April. The ADB expects the world's second largest economy to grow 4.5% next year, slower than the previous estimate of 4.8%. The outlook for the sub-regions this year remained mixed, with Southeast Asia and Central Asia expected to grow faster than previously projected at 5.1% and 3.9% respectively. Monetary policy tightening has accelerated as central banks in the region hiked rates to curb inflation and safeguard financial stability. Following 14 rate increases in Q1, the first quarter, there were 15 rate hikes in the second quarter and another 14 in July and August. Some central banks tightened aggressively to address concerns over debt-related macroeconomic vulnerabilities. The ADB, however, kept its growth forecast for Southeast Asia at 6.5% despite the lower growth estimate for India and an economic crisis in Sri Lanka. The Manila-based lender at the same time raised its inflation forecast in the region as supply disruptions continue to underpin food and fuel prices. Average inflation in developing Asia this year is now expected to hit 4.5%, up from April and July forecast of 3.7% and 4.2% respectively. For 2023, inflation is seeing hitting 4.0% compared to its projections of 3.1% in April and 3.5% in July. China-Vietnam vow to strengthen exchanges cooperation. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang had a phone conversation with Vietnamese Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin on bilateral ties, both pledging to further strengthen exchanges and cooperation. Noting that China and Vietnam are friendly neighbors linked by mountains and rivers, Li said Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, and Nguyen Pung Trong, General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee, maintained frequent communication, vigorously promoting the development of bilateral relations, and China is willing to strengthen exchanges and deepen cooperation with Vietnam to safeguard regional peace and stability. Li pointed out that, despite challenges arising from unexpected factors, the Chinese economy is withstanding downward pressure and is striving to ensure stable employment and commodity prices to keep operating within an appropriate range and the Chinese economy has maintained a recovery momentum. Pan Min Chin said, consolidating and developing the relations with China is the top priority of Vietnam's foreign policy and his country looks forward to maintain high-level exchanges, strengthening strategic coordination, properly handling differences and advancing cooperation in key areas so as to bring more positive results in the bilateral relations. Korean President talks up COVID relief efforts, multilateralism at the UN General Assembly. On behalf of the... Uh, Speaking at the United Nations General Assembly, South Korea's leader talked up the benefits of multilateralism just as the Asian country finds itself having to counter an ever more emboldened North Korea. Earlier this month, North Korea officially enshrined the right to use preemptive nuclear strikes to protect itself in a new law that leader Kim Jong-un said makes its nuclear status irreversible and bars the nuclearization talks. As an immediate response, the United States and South Korea denounced North Korea's first use nuclear doctrine unveiled this month as escalatory and destabilizing. When freedom of any citizen or nation in the global community is in peril, it is the community of nations that must stand together in solidarity to defend their freedom. Our modern history testifies to the process of our solidarity and unity in safeguarding freedom and pushing our civilization forward. Taking his turn during the first day of the 2022 United Nations General Assembly, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol appealed to the international cooperation. Taxed by the attempts to alter the status quo by force, nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction, and systematic violations of human rights, the global community is yet again witnessing freedom and peace of its citizens put in jeopardy. 
Such threats to freedom and peace must be overcome through solidarity and fearless commitment to the framework of universal norms consolidated over the years within the United Nations system. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President. Fresh Vietnamese Syrians arrive in China as first fruit import delivery. A total of 18.24 tons of fresh Vietnamese durians worth 512,400 yuan or over 73,000 US dollars arrived at the Yoyu Guan port, South China's Guangxi Tuan Autonomous Region, marking the first fruit import delivery in China after the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP agreement entered into force this year. The RCEP agreement, which came into effect on January 1st, comprises 15 Asia-Pacific countries including 10 ASEAN member states and five key trading partners, namely China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. Trade and cooperation in agricultural products among the RCEP members have been largely facilitated since the RCEP agreement came into effect. It only takes two hours to transport the durians from Vietnam to Yoyu Guan port, which helps to better preserve the freshness and taste of these durians, and hopefully they'll be better received by more Chinese consumers. As Vietnamese durians have the advantages of a long harvest season, high annual yields, a shorter transportation distance to China and low production cost, Chinese consumers are expected to savor more high-quality fresh durians. So far, a total of 66 types of fruits from nine ASEAN countries, including Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines, and Cambodia, have gained market access to China with Guangxi as the main import channel. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe and stay healthy.